Okay, day two, perspective number two, Tableau Public doesn't help the Tableau brand. What do I mean by that? Well, I think there are four problems that Tableau Public creates for the Tableau brand. And they're, they're kind of related, but they're also very separate problems. And they're largely a result of the heritage of Tableau throughout the years and essentially Tableau Public morphing into something very different today compared to how it was when it launched. And that's evolved over time and I think it's kind of gotten lost in the wind. So let me explain. When we talk about Tableau, I think people typically think of one thing. If I just go to a diagram, uh, let me just go to this diagram here. When we talk about Tableau, we talk about Tableau Desktop. When you think of Power BI, you're thinking of Power BI Desktop. When you think of Alteryx, you're thinking of Alteryx Designer. Rarely do you think of the platform. Rarely do you think of um, a specific sort of component like Tableau Prep. When you hear Tableau, even if you go to the Tableau homepage, you'll see the visualizations. And so people immediately think, ah, when I hear Tableau, I'm thinking about the product that I use to build the visualization. So that is inherently desktop. Now, there is a lot more to Tableau than that. In fact, if I go to the Tableau pricing page, um, you'll see that when you go and try and price up Tableau, there's actually a lot more to it than you would expect. Um, there's Tableau Cloud, there's Tableau Standard, which is a license. It's super confusing. And if I just go back one page um, and I actually go back here to the pricing, you'll see that with a single creator license, you actually get access to Tableau Desktop, Tableau Prep Builder, a creator license and a Tableau Cloud or Tableau server with advanced management, data management uh, set up. <laughs> There's a lot crammed into that one tiny little license. But again, most people just think of Tableau Desktop as part of that offering. And so when you go to do your pricing, let's just go forward to the pricing page we are on. I think it remembers your details. And um, if you're just trying to buy one creator license, then it's roughly around $900 for the year. You can't pay in months. Um, you have to, it's per user per month build annually. It allows you to compare it to other BI tools more easily. But you can't just buy one if you're in a team. Uh, you typically have to buy at least three because you've got the one developer, you've got a backup license in case someone else needs to develop, and then you've got the administrator who typically would need a creator license. There is another license that doesn't mean they have to get a creator license. You can get an admin explorer, but nonetheless, you typically need at least three creators really for it to work. And then you'll have some explorers and then you'll have another mix. So here I've gone for a team of roughly 20 people, three developers, four explorers, and the rest are just consumers. And there's a bunch of other things that you can, you can bundle on. But this is sort of getting beside the point. My point here is nowhere here are you given the option of Tableau Public. And that's a little bit strange because Tableau Public actually carries a lot of the value of Tableau Desktop. It's just missing a couple of things. And actually for a lot of use cases, for a lot of people just wanting to try the product, it's actually good enough, right? So if I go to Tableau Public here, you'll see that the thing it lacks is the ability to connect to databases. That's not there. You can connect to files. You can save locally. That's a recent change that was made and I've done a video about that. And you don't need to save to public to get that to work. You don't even need to register for Salesforce for that to work. So you can go ahead, go in there, download Tableau Public Desktop Edition, and you can do all of this really easily on your machine. To get the ability to connect to data sources, to get the ability to use Tableau Prep, and to get access to the platform, the additional uplift from that free price for Tableau Public is, drum roll, $900, right? And so it creates a bit of a confusion from a pricing perspective, because what Tableau is really saying is that to connect to databases, and to get access to the rest of the platform, you need to pay $900. And all of that wonderful innovation inside of Tableau Desktop, we're just gonna give that to you for free. So it, it, in my honest opinion, you put that side by side, you go, wait, wait a minute, that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I actually asked you know, people um, a question on LinkedIn. I said, hey, where do you place the value in the Tableau ecosystem? And this was a very uh, unscientific poll. And a lot of people put the value in much of what you get inside of Tableau Desktop. The second option, fast, efficient development. That's mostly Tableau Desktop. It's a little bit of Tableau Prep, but again, no one really thinks about Tableau Prep when they're thinking Tableau. They're really talking about desktop. Fast, efficient development, 34% of what most people think about Tableau goes in there. Beautiful, engaging visuals. I'll come to this point in a second, 20%. 
robust business functionality that you could say is spread across desktop and the platform and service so that makes a lot of sense user-friendly interface again that can be spread across the rest of the platform so really the exclusive thing here that is pinned to desktop which you also get in tableau public for free is fast efficient development you can develop with just a flat file and build what you need to and then share it as a screenshot as a pdf or even the file itself for someone to open and consume so that's number one it creates it creates this sort of massive problem with pricing the other thing is it creates confusion of what exactly is tablet <laughs> because when you go to uh, the tablet public homepage, um, I actually can't find where it is. Here we go. When you go to the tablet public homepage, you land here and you see this viz gallery. And actually, when I see tablet public in my feed, it's normally not even um, uh, what we see here on the viz feed. If we go to the tablet homepage and we actually just go down, you'll see that it's typically a split between hey, here's what Tableau Next is, and then here's something from Tableau Public, Viz of the Day, here's what Tableau Next is, Agent Force, here's what Tableau Public. It's a very sort of like um, balanced sort of thing to keep the feed nice and engaging but every so often pepper in the stuff that they know gets a little less engagement and is a little bit harder to, to get the community excited about uh, in here you see something like this let's just take this as a simple example by valerie um and this is actually really well designed it's really beautiful but here's the thing to build this to make it this good to make it this well formatted this doesn't come out of the box it actually takes quite a bit of effort even for something as basic as this to get it to look this good and you get this what I'm going to say confusion about what exactly Tableau is. Is it this thing that you see here on Tableau Public, this incredibly creative, artisanal, uh, like data viz, visual exploratory kind of um, thing that allows people to build really custom things like this out of the box? Or is it a business intelligence tool where actually this would be nice if it was out of the box, but in actual fact, to get to this, you have to do a lot more work. And I would argue that in today's world in analytics, there are tools that make this kind of stuff much, much easier out of the box. And maybe this is where Tableau Next is striving to reach, but it's not where Tableau is today. And so the second challenge is it creates a bit of confusion about what exactly is Tableau? What is it supposed to be? Is it for creating beautiful charts and whatever? And actually a lot of the stuff that you'll see here you can argue from a viz best practice doesn't lend itself well to business context, right? It doesn't, it's not, they're not things that you're going to want to build. Um, it's more of a place for expression. There are techniques, there are good things to learn from this, but there is a real sort of um, challenge and it creates this gap between, you know, the, I call it the inspiration versus reality gap. I come here to look at this basic stuff. The minute I have to try and build it at work, actually, the modern analysts shouldn't be trying to spend hours creating rounded corners. The modern analysts shouldn't be trying to spend hours building infographics. They should really be pushing for insight and in business intelligence, as it were, right? And when you open any one of these, you realize even something as beautiful as this by Tanya here. Um, when you look at something like this, it looks beautiful. It feels easy to do. And if you've ever done this, you go into the viz, you, you, are, you are able to download the workbook, you open it up and then you get in there and it's like, whoa, okay, um, I've got lots of sheets here and there, or I've got a really complicated formula with a trellis chart and that formula has been documented by one of the Kens in a blog, which takes you 20 minutes to read. And suddenly that promise that sort of bit of inspiration that i got just is no longer there right this does it <laughs> i get i get to this um uh, asset and i realize this is much much harder to do and actually i don't have half a day to waste in my day-to-day -day job as an analyst uh, building this thing i've actually got to build a backlog of different things and those need to be very very well polished and you know well delivered things like this, this creates what I call a wall of complexity, right? You see these great things, you go build them, you realize they're really hard. And then you go off on this, like what is essentially a year long journey to learn all these skills, to follow a video. And then yes, you do maybe accomplish a beautiful thing. But if I'm, if I'm being really honest, this isn't what analysts are supposed to be doing. <laughs> and this is largely why I stopped myself building a lot of Tableau public visualizations. Cause I just hit this point of realization where I was like, 
this isn't the job. This isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not supposed to be doing rounded corners. And this is why I suddenly picked up this sort of real passion for not using hacks. I, I, I built everything in Tableau Public pretty much based on standard functionality. It's pretty boring, if I may add. Um, it's not as exciting as some of the other stuff. And I have been able to get Visit the Day, ironically, both times about Donald Trump. First time he went for president and then his tweets. That's so weird. Um, but nonetheless, um, yeah, this is just not what analysts are supposed to be focusing on. And so if I encapsulate everything, if I just go back to sort of where I started, let's just get rid of this. You know, if you if you scale up the Tableau offer and you go out and you scale it up for a team of, uh, let's say, 18 people, you end up spending $7,000. If you just want desktop on its own, you get prep whether you want it or not. There's no sort of halfway house where you can just get desktop and nothing else. The full version um, on its own, that doesn't exist. There's nothing in the middle here. That's $900, roughly $1,000 a year. And for all of that great functionality, minus the ability to connect to databases, it's essentially free. And it kind of leaves you in this weird place where <laughs> like you walk away from this thinking, man, um, Tableau Public gives you a thousand dollars worth of value for free and Tableau tell you nothing about it anywhere on their um, landing page. If I just go to tableau.com, you'll go down. There is a mention about Tableau Public right here. Create and share on Tableau Public. A very subtle mention. Interact with the Viz. Go to the, the Viz Gallery. Go to the Viz Gallery. It's here. There's Create. There's Download. But it's very softly, softly. There is nothing right here in the pricing to say, hey, there is a free tier. If I go to hit this buy now option and I look at the licenses here, right in the middle, it's done in pounds because I'm in the UK, but right here, there should be a free option that just says Tableau desktop, no ability to connect to files, and it gives you all the value. This would be an absolute steal. And I think would start to maybe add to the proposition. But at the moment, it doesn't do any of that. So what on earth is it doing? It's not marketed here. When you get to it, a lot of the promise in the product isn't actually easy to do. And frankly, it's not what the modern analyst should be doing in today's world. Maybe five years ago, it was a USP. But in today's world where you have modern tools that are very quickly figuring out how to do nice visuals in a basic way, essentially following Tableau's playbook, um, it's now a commodity like doing good charts is becoming a commodity and it, you know tablet has to step up its game especially on the formatting front so that 90 percent of what we do isn't formatting i do think there's lots of interesting things happening there if you watch the um devs on stage you'll see some of the great ai capability around formatting and I've, I've seen incredible internal things that have not yet been public around that capability i know it's possible but in today's world, Tableau Public puts that front and forward wherever that page is um, as the key proposition of Tableau. Even IronViz, even all the stuff you see on Visit of the Day, they're just a world away from, I think, the world of business intelligence, i.e. making things for insights in the business world. Wait, I nearly forgot. We talked a lot about pricing. Tomorrow, I want to talk about a change that's happened in the analytics world around pricing and it tees up Tableau Next pretty well. And Tableau Next will be the last video that I do in this sort of series of short perspectives. But um, pricing is 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 pretty hard to understand at the moment in analytics. And I want to dig into that. Tune in tomorrow to find out more.